the movie Halloween Kills, which is coming out next month. Second of the three that Jamie Lee Curtis reviving after, boy, 43 years. Finally got her back. Yeah, since the first Halloween. She was in Halloween 1 and 2 in 1978 and like maybe 80 or 81. Then 20 years later in 1998 for Halloween H2O, and she said she was done with it. And they chopped off Michael Myers' head in that one. Then she said when they revamped it a year or two ago, three years ago, she said, all right, forget all the sequels and everything in between. Is this a reboot? It is a... I believe it. we would call it a reboot. She says, just pretend Halloween 2 and 3 and 4, 5, 6, 7 didn't happen. Mm. Pretend nothing. So H2O this is a didn't sequel happen. to 2. To, 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 one? to 1? To 1. To 1. Yeah, they didn't even want Halloween 2 as to be part mm. of it. No. And so now Halloween Kills is the second one of this group. This is the 12th movie to star Michael Myers, the killer, who is now in his, as we mentioned, late 70s. Mm-hmm. But still, still, getting it done. Great strength. Great but, strength. Yeah, I mean... You, you know, there's no days off That's know, right. at that age. That's right. Unfortunately, Chris Tim says the early reviews now are not good. Most critics don't like it. Most people on sites like IMDb don't like it. You know what I heard about it yesterday? Run-of-the-mill horror. Just nothing new here. You know, we've mm. seen it all before. Now, I like that. <laughs> I, I like t- t- teens being killed that's what you want i run of the mill i i'm run of the mill i like a run of the mill horror i didn't i didn't like the one three years ago because i thought jamie lee curtis was too tough she's like this vigilante that is waiting for him to come back so she can kill him yeah you were called sexist though i believe yeah Mm -hmm. it was the height of the me too Mm -hmm. movement too and i was saying you know Mm -hmm. why does this woman women fighting back (laughs) am i right (laughs) jeez that fell uh, that was a thud take a page out of the 70s playbook yeah 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 (laughs) Yesterday, I watched this show here called The 425. Mm-hmm. It's like a lead in to the local news. They it's do a lighter a, touch, of lighter the news. touch, a lot of entertainment fluff. I call it fluff. And uh, it's mostly what we what think they call do? us <laughs> the fluffiest. The fluff. Oh my God. If, if, ever. If, if they're fluff, yeah. they're like, <laughs> d- like a dandelion. I mean, cotton candy. <laughs> right. So uh, they're on The 425 talking about horror movies. There's, the lead anchor's name is Chad Silber. And he's very good. He's won some awards, like state from respected organizations. Very, very yeah. good. And well, I believe we won an award the same time he did one time. Yes. And uh, he had absolutely no clue who we were. None. <laughs> we went up to him and said, "Hey, also get- we're in the same city, <laughs> huh? Let's get a picture." All the yeah. yeah. Oh, one guy's been doing this about 20 years. <laughs> really? I've never heard of you. What? I had to hold Dave back. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. He was dapper in his suit, and there we oh, were. Yeah. God, we were falling out of mm-hmm. our chairs. Are you the valet? <laughs> no, my name is Chris Dem. <laughs> we just I'm won. a giant in this industry. <laughs> we just won an award. He's up there. I mean, looks perfect. Are y'all sponsoring this fat kid? <laughs> I'm the producer. <laughs> of what? <laughs> His name oh, is. I uh, was a Make a Wish. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wondered why. But I, th- what a... I thought you guys were at the Make a Wish table. You're coming here. <laughs> it was awards day, and he won for yeah. best yeah. anchor. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we went up to him like a couple of local guys. High five. Mm-hmm. What do you mean local? Who are you? <laughs> uh, we didn't know. And he's great. He is really good. Yes. But he does now. He does the hard news at six. But they put him on fluff news at the four two five occasionally, not always. But I'll tell you what he's the king of doing. Yesterday, they did this story. Same story. Uh, Halloween is back. They showed a little pe- teaser. The release date is? October 15th, I believe. Mid, mid of the month. And uh, so Is the, this going to be just theaters, do you know? I think it is. I think it is just theaters to start. And then uh, it's been delayed a year. It's supposed to be last Halloween. Oh. Uh, and then the next one, the last of the trilogy, will be one year from now. That's Halloween Ends. So they went Halloween, Halloween Kills, and Halloween Ends. Oh. And that's already been shot. It's ready to go. Anyhow, uh, he, he's on, and they do. They're talking about this story about the reviews of Halloween Kills, and one of the the, the female anchor, Lauren Coleman, says, "Do you like horror movies?" To Chad Silver, and he goes, "Oh God, no! I hate everything about them. You can have it. I'll do the candy corn and the trick or treating, but I will <laughs> not watch a horror movie." And she's like, "Oh, I like them." And that was it. <laughs> <laughs> that was I it. think they're fun. <laughs> I like a, I like a good scare. <laughs> That's what mm-hmm. she said. And he said, "Don't you get scared?" 
And, he, and she said, well, no, yeah, that's, that's, the that's point. part of the, the whole fun. point. He's like, I don't see anything fun about it. No haunted houses, no horror movies. He goes, somebody duped me into seeing paranormal activity. I said, never again. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, okay, all right. Good, thank you for sharing. That is, <laughs> that is not going to happen. One critic did say Halloween Kills is a nonstop blood gushing mess, which I like. I'm yeah. for that. Yeah, one of the headlines. I didn't read the. I didn't click the link, but it's they call it Halloween mm-hmm. Overkills. Yes. Okay. See that it's. Uh, so it's like you know on the uh, the Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's at fifty three percent. Yeah. And then there's another Metacritic. I think it's like at forty six percent. Fifty three on Rotten Tomatoes is terrible. If you know my friend New Hampshire Tim won't see it if it's under seventy. He will not. It's like a grading mm-hmm. scale. He, yeah. he he will not break his rule on that. I don't know what. I'm trying to think. What's the le- best horror movie you've seen in the last 15 years that's been new? Um, for me, I, I have two. Well, you know mine. Yeah, you know the one I love so much that nobody ever likes. Oh, oh that, yeah, the Baba, Baba Duke. Duke. Baba Duke. Oh. It's the Baba Duke. Mm-hmm. That is a great movie. Mine is a uh, Cabin in the Woods, which I think we all phenomenal. Like. Different take. Totally great, great movie. And uh, I know Chris Dim saw this and it scared me the conjuring the first one very good so good just yeah. saw it recently yeah. really liked it uh i had heard a lot about it really liked it but the baba duke what do you where would you put um uh, parasite is that a i guess horror movie or is that I, slightly I, I, different i don't think that's a traditional horror movie not in the sense i and i loved parasite but i i wouldn't put that as a horror movie no, i don't think not in the genre yeah halloween from a few years ago i didn't like and i it was Overkills is right. The great thing about the 1978 Halloween is that it is so subtle. It doesn't have a lot of blood. You see him, you know. I love it. It's great. It's really well done. The one from three years ago, there's a lot of blood, and it's, you know, it it just seemed heavy-handed to me. It's hard to recapture that beauty of that first well, and the one. first one when they would pan through the windows and stuff. And there he'd be, his face. So scary. They only had a million-dollar budget. And so they couldn't do a whole lot, mm. you know. It was it, I was very very impressed with that one. And since then, uh, none of them have hit me great. And yet, I'll be there. I'm I'm going to see that now. I really mask. Am. I love it. I'll mask up. Yeah, I'll put. Oh, I should put on the mask. Uh-huh. Wouldn't that be something? You know, you got to have a mask in there. Here's the uh, woman who says that her most embarrassing moment turned out to be her biggest career break. It's Adina Menzel. She says at first she was embarrassed when John Travolta at the Oscars, this was in 2014, said her name incorrectly. From the Oscar winning animated movie Frozen, please welcome the wickedly talented one and only Adele Dazeen. She said, uh, now she was about to, she sings Let It Go from Frozen, the anthem from that movie. And she said it threw her off her game because she was nervous after he said that. And then she said, I felt sorry for, for myself, but as soon as the band started, I said, get yourself t- together, stop worrying about it, and go do it. And that gave her the confidence to sing the song. And then afterwards, when everybody was talking about him messing up... From the Oscar-winning animated movie Frozen, please welcome the wickedly talented one and only Adele Dazeen. She More doors opened for her. It was like people mm. knew her from that and thought it was fun and funny and it really worked for her. And she said that he has been so apologetic ever since that he's, they've become friends, that he's mm. a great guy. Yeah, and you sure. know, Of course, she never blamed him for that or anything. But I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, that, and I... Uh really put her on my radar <laughs> me too i mean i knew her from the movie because I, I saw it and i knew she was on broadway and sang but that's about it i saw frozen three times in theater and have seen it at least 15 times on that's without kids so i never I, I, my kids didn't go what? <laughs> they don't like it. they don't yeah. like it when i said what's your favorite movie they always say something else like a titanic and i was like oh no no frozen my, my nieces they love it it's mm. tremendous and my sister has had they every day they want to wear their frozen dresses it's because they have good taste <laughs> a beer <laughs> yeah. two they actually you know what today is their third birthday okay. well, what do you know Happy there you birthday. go but they uh my sister had to run back has gone back to the store and bought each size next up because mm-hmm. if they you know they come home from school or daycare and they want to put on their frozen dress. How many days did I come in here with my frozen dress on? I mean, too many to count. count. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was so good. There's some, and I've seen it now. I like it, but there's something about that movie that kids and well, Chris Kelly just really flock to. <laughs> my CD player in the act broke in uh, winter of 2015. I, would I remember say. that day, and they had to replace the CD player because it would it was playing. It's a problem. It's- 
disc is jammed in there. <laughs> the Who's the problem? Yeah, <laughs> CD player. It was the Frozen soundtrack, <laughs> and it played "Let It Go" over and over and over again. Over and over. And the uh, audio technician said, "Do you have kids in the car often?" And I said, "No. Why do you ask?" <laughs> Don't look in the trunk. <laughs> What a bad feeling. He's like, mm-hmm. this is, uh, it wouldn't stop playing Let It Go. I think the wickedly talented Adele Dazim, I think she's the new, uh, I think she's in that new Cinderella. That's oh, why she's doing, doing, some press. She. doing some press. Amazing voice. I mean, she's oh, yeah, a great she can singer. sing. And my wife, I think I told you this, my wife saw her mm-hmm. in Wicked yeah. on Broadway 15, 20 years ago. Phenomenal. What a talent. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah. Um, here's Big's favorite Phil Collins. You've seen Phil Collins. Mm-hmm. When? Three, four years ago? About three years now, yeah. Was he playing drums then? No. He says now, the Genesis is getting ready to go back out on tour. We had tickets to that. That's when I announced we have tickets, but forgot to tell you mm-hmm. what they were for oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. We gave away tickets to the Genesis show. He was on yesterday uh, promoting the, the upcoming concert, and they asked him, can you still play drums at all? Kind of physically challenged a bit, which is very frustrating because, uh, you know, I'd love to be playing up there with my son. Are you able to do any drumming at all these days? No. No, I, I'd love to, but, you know, I, I mean, I can barely hold a stick with this hand. So um, there are there are certain physical things which get in the way. Sounds bad. Can he play piano? No, he. I, I, when I saw him three years he ago, sits, he, sits and sings. he comes out from the side, the whole band's out there ready, he sits in a chair, and he says... Hey guys, sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is it now. Mm-hmm. My legs all messed up. My back's messed up. And um, the one thing he did do was kind of like his son is the drummer now, mm-hmm. and his son came down and they kind of did like a almost like a drum off, mm-hmm. like with like bongos, and he was sitting on kind of a crate and mm-hmm. and drumming. And that was it, though. There, yeah. There's, you know, but I don't even know if he can do that. That was three years ago. Says he can't hold a stick now. Yeah. And uh, it, surgery in 2015, and he fell a few times after that. His back is a wreck. Mm. I hate to, he's only 70. Yeah. I say only. Mm. He's only 70 years old. Well, let me tell you, he still sings. He sounds rough, but he sings mm-hmm. three years now, three okay. years ago. Yeah. He still sang great. I'd be into it then. I'd be into seeing Genesis and Phil Collins. I would too, but I'm going to tell you this: I'm not paying those prices. A little bit heavy on the price to me. Mm-hmm. They were yeah. a little much. I, I didn't pay that for the Phil Collins tickets. One more, uh, and he played Genesis songs in, so I'm good. There's a piece of uh, entertainment news today. My wife sent me, and she said, "Would we be able to do this?" Uh, Oprah Winfrey says, "You know, she's a big Oprah fan." Oprah Winfrey says, "Gail King, her best friend, who's now host of the CBS Morning Show." has been on every vacation she has taken since 1993, including the ones with Stedman. And Stedman has said to Oprah, does Gail have to come on all of these? And Oprah says, yes, she does. does. (laughs) And so my wife said, do you think you could go on every single vacation with your best friend, Biggie? And I said, (laughs) yes, I could. (laughs) In fact, I I get any say so. I insist on coming on every single vacation with Biggie. I was going to, this was a surprise. I was going to go with you to Nashville and I was going to be the one pushing you in your scooter, (laughs) but that trip got canceled. Unfortunately, (sighs) that was as big a jolt to me as it was to you. Mm -hmm. They have a 45 year friendship and she says, I wouldn't even consider taking a vacation without her. Stedman says just once, once, just once. (laughs) What do you mean? (laughs) Consider it. (laughs) <laughs> that is a bit odd, I'll be honest. <laughs> it does seem a little. Yeah. Seems a little strange, doesn't it?